All right, it's time to spend another five minutes with a special guest, and this one I'm really excited for today. Scott Leslie joins us, a good friend of mine. Scott, how are you today? I'm great. How are you? I'm, I'm doing, doing okay, hanging in there as best we can. Uh, we have a very special topic, and uh, I know you got to choose it, so, so let everybody out there know what we're going to talk about today. Well, I was doing a little reminiscing about some Pittsburgh sports going back into the 70s and some in the 90s. Oh, this is going to be a lot of fun. And I, I know we got a lot of people out here from California who may not be fans of, of Pittsburgh, but the stories I think we're going to find out are going to be a lot, of, uh, a lot of good times to talk about. All right, five minutes on the clock. Here we go. Let's start off by talking about this in our, in our pre-talk. You told me you went to the Immaculate Reception game. What was that experience like? Uh, let everybody at home know uh, how that was. Well, it was pretty exciting. Um, at the time, you know, when it would happen, um, it was kind of a desperation play from what I remember. I was sitting in Three River Stadium at the top deck around the 40-yard line, and uh, the game, Bradshaw went back. Uh, he looked like he was going to be tackled. He threw the ball down the field. It looked like it hit uh, – Jack Tatum and Frenchie Fuqua at the same time and the ball bounced back and and Franco Harris ended up with the ball and, and ran into the end zone he actually didn't go untouched there was a chance that he could have been uh blocked out but uh or, or tackled but uh he ended up in the end zone uh the referees I saw their arms go up in the air and then there was a big timeout and a, a Madden the, the head coach for the Raiders was yelling and screaming and rolling his <laughs> arms around and uh, there was probably about a 30 to 45 minute delay before it was actually ruled a touchdown wow um, in those days if the ball had hit and, and in those days they didn't have video replay mm -hmm. um, I, actually I, I found out after that they did look at video but there was no video replay in those days and um they rolled it a touchdown but it took some time and you know everybody went home very excited and um you know the Steelers won and that you know Steelers up to that point were perennial losers and this actually turned it around wow all right so from your vantage point did you think the play was legal I I saw the ball I I, I couldn't see if it hit Frenchie Fuqua first or Jack Tatum first, but um, the way the ball bounced, it, it, Tatum was coming into the ball, so it, it, it had to have hit off of him and then bounced backwards, and that's where Franco was. So it looked to me like it was a good play. And the ball never hit the ground? And the ball never hit the ground. The ball never hit the ground. You can – I have even talked to uh, – ran into uh, uh, Franco – uh, after that, and he said that we know the ball never hit the ground. Hey, that's good enough for me. I'll take it. You were there. I don't know anybody who was there, so I'm I'm fine with it. Uh, another story you were telling us about are the days when you would play pickup hockey, and you got to got to play with some pros, including somebody who didn't skate all that often. Well, um, flash forward a little bit to the '90s. You know, the Pens were in the Stanley Cups '91, '92. Uh, they won, so they were you know. Penn's hockey was really big then. Um, and this was the 94, uh, 95 lockout season. I got to practice, uh, being a, an ex-goalie, I got to uh, practice with the Pens a little bit. And uh, from there, I played on some adult leagues. And uh, we had uh, Ron Francis and uh, we had uh, Jack Lambert play on my adult league team. Wow. So that was, yeah. He ain't little. I'm sorry? <laughs> he, he ain't little. No. Well, <laughs> actually, um, you'd be surprised. When you stand next to Jack Lambert, um, he was only about 6'1". I'm 6'3", I'm at the time probably 6'4". Uh, but uh, he, he was a lot smaller than I was. I was really surprised when you're standing next to him. He's a lot smaller. Um, but he was strong. I tell you what, he was stronger than a bulldog. And he could skate okay? He he skated okay. Um, he wasn't the best skater on the ice, but he wasn't the worst. So he, he played center. So um, the opposing goalies, when they would see him coming down the ice, uh, handling the puck, they would look up and see those, that toothless smile of his, and that would scare the, scare the living daylights out of him. All right, we're down to our last 40 seconds here. I just wanted to touch on one last point. We covered the other two teams. Got to talk about the Pirates. You had some ties to them, too, when you were younger. Is that right? Well, um, I, 
when I went to college, I got a uh, baseball scholarship, and my uh, coach at, the, at at Denison University was a scout for the Pirates. And in the early 80s, they were looking for lefty pitchers. And I had a really good slider, good fastball, and an excellent curveball. That was – slider was probably my best pitch. Curveball was probably – I threw the ball probably 92, 93. Um, but uh, he, I actually got drafted by the Pirates back then. But when I graduated college, uh, they weren't really interested after that. They signed me after my sophomore years, and they wanted me to go right then and there, which I stayed in school. Look at that. Right at the five-minute mark, we got to cover all three teams in Pittsburgh and your ties to them. Scott, this has been a whole lot of fun. Thanks for this. We're going to have to do another one because these stories were just too good. Hey, you're welcome. Thanks.